Okay, hello everyone, how are you today? It's Kay, how's it going? I hope you're having a great weekend today. So uh, let's start. This is the 22nd of August. So today I will be covering the forex pairs and commodity gold and oil and also indices and at the end of the live stream today I will cover the news for next week so that we can prepare for the trades for next week. So once again, thank you for joining everyone. My name is Kei and I am a full-time Japanese forex trader who is living in Dubai since July. Before I was in Tokyo, Japan, but since July I have relocated to Dubai. And this channel is about using Ichimoku to spot trends and reversals and to improve your trades. And the goal for this YouTube channel is to help you become a non-losing trader, which is the very first step you have to achieve before you become a profitable trader. So hopefully you enjoy today's live session as, as I go over these charts and some uh, analysis. So let me squeeze my face and get right into the topic right now. So just as a quick disclaimer before starting here, um, uh, this information is um, based on my own experience knowledge. So when you take trades, please do add in risk. And if you can please follow the guidelines and rules on this live stream, that would be great because after all, we're all here to learn. So let me quickly to, to say hi to everyone and start the live session right now. So let's see who's here first, quickly, and uh, Davinx, thank you for joining. Thank you for finding my channel. Welcome, welcome so much. Thank you for joining. All right, I don't have te Telegram right now. I only have Discord for Ichimoku community, but I don't have Telegram. Um, all right, Sarosh and Rose, Ivan, Christopher, Blackwater, and uh, Blue Rent, Jorg and Nami, Asif, Akbar, Kishore, and uh, MG, Chayan, CG, and um, Jokeris. Thank you for joining, Sarosh, and Anne, Susan, and Kale, and MZ. Great to see you here. Yes, um, Jokeris, I will cover Pound JPY. Yes, so I will cover the Forex pairs first. The Forex pairs I have on my watch list, I have 21 Forex pairs on the right, on the right side. So I will cover these pairs first. So in case you miss one of these informations, you can always watch archive and listen to my analysis on the archive. So today, this is in on Sunday. So this is when weekly candlestick closes. So every week on Sundays, I cover the weekly charts. Weekly charts on Forex and gold and oil and indices. And during the week, I cover daily and lower time frames because this is what I usually do. I cover, I screen the markets based on the weekly time frame so that the um, I can get ready to prepare for the next week. If, we, if I see some weekly trends and then that means I can see the lower time frame trends on that direction also. Or when we see retracement in the weekly chart, then on the daily chart, lower time frames, we might see retracement. So, on the weekly chart, you have to check every weekend and Mondays. And on the monthly chart, I recommend everybody to watch by the end of the month and in the beginning of the month. So, let's start. Let me um, adjust this uh, wipe a little bit bigger so that uh, it, it looks better. All right, there you go. So, let's start. Akbar says, K, uh, um, okay, K was the reason to move to Dubai because of your full-time trading profession or some other reason. Um, yes, there are multiple reasons. You can find the reasons on my second channel. So please visit there and uh, watch my video about the reason for moving to Dubai. But yeah, uh, trading, of course, uh, trading opportunities is one of the reasons why I relocated to Dubai. Okay, so let's start now. So let me cover the pairs first. 
So you can type any questions and comments because I will cover these afterwards. But let me focus on this analysis first, because so that um, for those who are watching the archive can review easily. So first, I will cover the euro pairs. So euro data, I will start first. So oops, let me just delete these lines. And the euro data on the weekly chart. The market is going into the Kumo now. So this is where you see the price ranging market. Whenever you see a price within the Kumo, that means that this is ranging. So that means the market can be spiky. It might be going up and down. So that will be a tricky market. In the lower time frames, we see downtrend on the Euro USD. So next week could be downtrend, but it might turn bullish anytime soon because the price is in the Kumo now. So um, we will see the stable downtrend after the Kumo breakout, but until then, we might see retracements everywhere in the market. So we have to be careful. We have to have the risk management uh, in the lower time frames. So that's Euro USD. And moving on to Euro AUD, last week was a huge bullish candle and the price stopped at 1.6441 level, which is the pre previous resistance level. And the price for, from here may retrace backwards. It may retrace backwards because the price also is within the Kumo on the weekly chart. So until the market breaks the Kumo upwards, the market can be ranging spiky, so we have to be careful. This is not a stable trend in the weekly chart at least. So the next one is pound, sorry, Euro pound. Euro pound continuously be bearish. So last week was bullish, but overall, this is bearish Euro pound. So the Kumo's down, and Kijun Sen down, and the Chikou Span touching, start to touch with the candles. So the market might break the Kijun Sen upwards. And if we see this next week, then the market is going to be in the range, the retracement market. So, um, but if the market will be resisted by the Kijun Sen, and then that will, be, that will go down this way. So next week, because this one euro pound is also bullish on the daily chart or the lower time frames, we might see bullishness continuously. But uh, we, it might twist bearish because of this Kijun Sen resistance. So just watch out for next week on that one. And the next one is Euro JPY. Euro JPY is also retracing backwards, broke the Kijun Sen, and we see Kijun Sen, Tenkan Sen, dead cross. And I got these questions many times, is that the, so when you see Kijun Sen, Tenkan Sen, Death Cross, can we sell? And my answer is no, because this Death Cross happens above the Kumo. If this Death Cross happens below the Kumo, then that will be most trustable. But if this, this uh, Death Cross above the Kumo means that this is the end of the uptrend. So, but it doesn't mean that the market keeps going down this way from afterwards. It might become range, it might be downtrending or it might be uptrending and we're not sure which way it goes. So in the lower time frames, it might be spiky in this case. So we can follow the daily chart, daily time frame or lower time frames, but at least on the weekly chart is still retracing, ranging. It just ended. The uptrend is what we can find on the weekly chart. So. The market could go down after the after this chikou span breakout. The market could go down back to the kumo. So if you see downtrend next week, the target is at the kumo on the senkou span A on the weekly chart basis. And the next one is EuroCAD. EuroCAD is also flat ranging. Right now, kumo is flat, and kijun sen flat. So this is a range. Last week was bullish and the market was about to break the resistance level at 1.51, the run number, but uh, it was resist resisted and retraces backwards. So since this one is also the flat ranging as per weekly chart, the market might go up and down and we don't know which way it's going. But one thing for sure is that uh, I am actually waiting for the market to break the resistance level and then look for buy chance in lower time frames. If it happens on daily chart or the forward chart, then I follow. 
otherwise the market can be retracing or ranging afterwards. So let's move on to the Euro Swiss franc. Euro Swiss franc is uh, very interesting because it just broke the Kumo downwards last week. We have this Kumo breakout after Tenkan Sen Kijun Sen break and the Chikol Span breakout. So next week could be bearish. I'm expecting the market to be bearish after this Kumo breakout. We have also a uh, Kumo twisted bearish also on the weekly chart. So we might see downtrend. If you see downtrend on the lower time frames, then of course we can follow that. So Euro Swiss run, I will mark this one after this, after this um, Kumo breakout. I will just turn it purple because this is a weekly chart. And next one, let's move on to some USD pairs. So first I will cover um, USD JPY. This one is flat right now because Kumo Sen Kosman B flat and A flat and Kijun Sen flat too. And this is called P wave. P wave is actually a type of Ichimoku range market where the highs, uh, highs are lower and the lows higher. And this is called a P wave or a, a triangle range. And when it's triangle range, while Kumo flat, Kijun Sen flat, um, we're not really sure which way it breaks. So simply wait until the market breaks either direction and follow that, follow that, follow that direction afterwards. So this is basically what I find here. So right now, I, I don't think I will take trades next week on this Dara JPY unless we have some nice and huge trending market. And the next one is Dara Sysfran. This one is not really worth to look at because not only the market is flat ranging, but also the market is within the Kumo and this is P wave. So in this case, we're not really sure which way it goes. So simply stay away is my device. And the next one is USCCAD. This one was also bullish last week. I think uh, you can capture some nice pips last week by following the Ichimoku trend analysis. But the price is on the weekly basis, it was on the consecutive bullish wave and the market reached up to the single span A level. So, and also we had this uh, Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen uh, gold cross and the Chikol span breakout. So looks like the market is heading towards the Kumo. So next week could be bullish, but uh, we have to wait until the market breaks this resistance level of 1.2 one point, sorry, two nine four eight level. We have to wait for that level to break. Otherwise, it may retrace, or it might be ranging, because this resistance line is very important. Because on the weekly chart, this is not only twice resisted here, but also there was a support level here. So this is what I call reversal line. Reversal line. Before it was support, and now it becomes resistance. So once it breaks. It can be very spiky. It, it can be uh, a strong trend upwards. So simply just waiting for that. Until then, we can just stay away. Usually on Mondays on Forex pairs, it tends to be quiet. So no rush. We can maybe come back on Tuesday, and until we see some active markets. And here is the pound USD. So let's move on to the pound pairs. The pound USD on the weekly chart. This is also retracing backwards. Looks like this is on the reversed in the wave. Or this is a bit like P wave, but this is like descending P wave to me. Because you can draw the support line and highs are lower. So this is a descending um, P wave. Or if you can include the previous uptrend also, this is typically called a potential head and shoulders. And once the neckline breakout happens, so in this case, neckline is at this level of 1.35, to be precise, 1.3568 is the neckline. And once the market breaks the neckline, we might see continuous downtrend. And the market will be going into the Kumo after this Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen, Dead Cross, and the Chikol Span breakout. And when we really see the Kumo breakout, then that will become Sanyaku Gyakuten signal 
and we may see continuous downtrend afterwards. But here on this chart pattern, I, we might see a head and shoulders after the neckline breakout. So if it happens, that will be a sell on the daily chart or lower time frames. So that is pound USD. So let's move on to pound JPY. The pound JPY is also retracing and the market broke the Kijun Sen now. So this is in the range. And also this one too, we see potential head and shoulders. The head and shoulders is not happening yet because until we see the neckline break, it's not completed. So we have to wait for the market breaks the neckline at 148.42 and once it does, it can go backwards to the Kumo. So single span A will be the potential target if it happens. So in this case, this is a bit tricky because the Kumo is up and Kijun Sen is up. So you might ask, so isn't this still uptrend? And my answer is no, because the price is in between Kijun Sen and Kumo. And also Chikou span touching with the candles and this is the sign of the range. The retracement is a bit too huge, so we can't expect the market goes up continuously. Unless the market breaks, the Kijun Sen up again, this is range or retracing backwards. So it may be retracing continuously, so we have to be careful. We have to follow the downtrend once the market breaks, 148.42. Yes, I will cover gold after I cover these Forex pairs, so please bear with me. And the next one is pound AUD. Yeah, the pound AUD was bullish last week and also on the weekly chart, this is bullish too. The Kumo's up, Kijun Sen is pointing upwards and uh, Tenkan Sen is also up and it's Chikou Span above the candles. So although the Kijun Sen is within the Kumo now, the market is about to break the Kumo upwards. So we have to wait until the market breaks the Senko Span B level as well as the previous resistance level at um, 1.9145. If it breaks, then we might see uptrend, but until it happens, um, we might see uptrend next week because we see Kumo up, Kijun Sen up in this weekly chart. So this can be consecutive N waves on this direction. So this one is nice. We can watch charts, watch pound AUD from Monday to see if, if the market breaks the resistance level or not. So let's move on to the next one, pound CAD. This is range. Kumo flat and Kumo's very thin, very tiny Kumo here. And the Kijun Sen is completely flat. And the Chikou Span is very close. This is like within the candles now. So this is the sign of range as per Ichimoku confirmations, and this is a market to stay away. You don't want to touch in this one because this might be a tricky market next week on the lower time frames. So I don't mark this one. And the next one is Pound Sisran. Pound Sisran is also retracing. So this is kind of fake Kumo and Kijun Sen angle because the price is now in between Kijun Sen and Kumo. We had already the Tenkan Sen Kijun Sen did cross above the Kumo, which means that this is the end of the uptrend already. And we see the Chikou Span break. So the price is heading backwards to the Kumo. So Senko Span A is going to be the target for next week. So I will mark this one because this is also downtrending, Pan Swiss run. And the next one is the AUD USD. Let's cover the AUD pairs. So AUD USD is also bearish. Last week was strong bearish trend, but in the weekly chart, this is still within the Kumo here. The Kumo twist is very tiny. So that means it might turn bullish in time soon. And we do see the previous, previous support level. Previous support level was here at around uh, 0 0.6989. So the market might drop all the way down to that level and it may retrace backwards because the Kumo is very tiny still. So with that scenario, we can sell with the target of that level, 0 0.6989, and uh, we can just follow the downtrend until then. So that is the AUD USD. And the next one I want to cover is the 
AUDCAD. This one is stable downtrend because the Kumo is nice. Kumo is much nicer than AUDUSD. The Kumo is downtrending, Senko Span B is down, Senko Span A is also pointing downwards. And Kijun Sen is pointing downwards, Tenkan Sen is pointing downwards because of this Kumo breakout, sorry, this, because of this uh, support line breakout. And also Chikou Span is locating below the candles. And this is bearish, so we can expect next week breakout of the previous support level, 0.9140 level, and we may see continuous downtrend. And after, the, after that, the market can break the Kumo, and we might see even continuous downtrend furthermore. So we can watch this one next Monday, AUDCAD, but not AUDUSD because the Kumo is way too tiny, so it might twist backwards anytime soon. So I think AUDCAD is better one to watch next from next Monday. And this one also previously there was a uh, head and shoulders, and neckline breakout was happened here. So there was a neckline and the market is potential downtrend continuously. So let's move on to the next one, AUDJPY. The AUDJPY is also a bit bearish because this is, you know, this is after Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen did cross and Chikou Span breakout. And this is also can be retraced backwards anytime soon because the price is within the Kumo and also Kumo hasn't twisted bearish yet. So this might be tricky. So although we saw downtrend on AUDJPY on the daily chart, it might turn bullish anytime soon. So with that in mind, you have to monitor the chart. And the next one is AUDCS run. This one is also within the Kumo now, so it might turn bullish anytime soon. Uh, the Kumo hasn't twisted yet, so after this Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen, Dead Cross, and Chikou Span breakout, looks like the Kumo, looks like the price is going through the Kumo now, but um, I don't think it's gonna happen next week. I think it won't take more time. So next week could be range after this huge downtrend. Um, or it may continuously be downtrend. So we have to judge that based on the lower time frames. We can't tell from this weekly chart in this example. So let's move on to the CAD pairs. CAD JPY. Uh, this one is also downtrending last week, but if you see Kumo is flat and Kijun Sen is moving up and Tenkan Sen is bearish, so they're about to dead cross and this might be the end of the uptrend next week. So next week could be range because market might be supported at 84, 85.4 level because the, the, this was the previous support level. And since the Kumo flat still and Kijun Sen is about to be flat and Chikou Span is about to touch the candles, it might be range. So I don't think CJPY uh, will be trending next week unless the market breaks the support. So next week, I think I will just stay away from this one on Monday or Tuesday. And CADCHF, this one is also the similar to CADJPY. It's flat Kumo, Kijun Sen, Tenkan Sen, about dead cross, Chikou Span touching. So we have to wait until the market breaks. The support level of, uh, hold on, let's support level of 0 0.7087 or simply wait for the price breaks the Kumo downwards. And lastly, this is Swiss Run JPY. And you can see that this is in a complete range. Kumo is flat and the Kijun Sen is completely flat. So there is no trend and no trace next week. Okay, so that covers the whole Forex pairs on my watch list. I covered 21 pairs. So in case you miss one of these pairs analysis, you can always watch archive and catch up. So the next one I cover the gold. So I know lots of traders are interested in gold. So here is the analysis. You can let's watch that. So this is weekly chart, weekly gold. 
and this is in the range mode because the Kumo is down, but the Kijun Sen is flat. And last week was the Doji candlestick, and the Chikou Span has been overlapping with the candles. So this is the range. Now one thing we can expect here is that I expect next week will be bearish because if you see Chikou Span, this is about the Chikou Span um, synchronizing to, to the past candles that when you see Chikou Span start to touch the candles, it traces the previous candlesticks in the weekly chart. So, so uh, from Chikou Span viewpoint, next week will be bearish candle. So most likely Chikou Span will trace the candles and it might be bearish. So that means in the market itself, it might be bearish next week. And that's one thing. So, but we have to wait for this doji breakout anyways. So in gold, let me go down to the one hour, go down to the daily chart. So here is the daily chart. And if you see the daily chart, this is also ranging. We have consecutive doji candles. And last week started from the 16th of August. So this one, two, three, four, five candles created the weekly candlestick. So on the weekly chart, once again, we have this doji candle. So simply we have to wait for the doji breakout. So doji low last week was here at 1770.38 and doji high was at here, uh, 1795.69. And because of this weekly Chikou span has been tracing the past candles, uh, I expect the market breaks the support at 1770.38. But unless it happens, I won't trade. But once it does, what we see here in the daily chart is once the market breaks that level, then it might retrace all the way back down to the Kijun Sen. So if you're looking for the sell chance next week, then the Kijun Sen could be the target, but uh, we never know. It might break the range upwards. It might break the 1795.68 upwards. If that's the case, then uh, I would follow the uptrend. I will uh, switch my mindset and follow the uptrend because this, this level is also the reversal level previous, lots of previous resistance and supports on this level. So we might see a new uptrend afterwards. But uh, in terms of Ichimoku analysis, on the weekly chart basis, since Chikou Span has been tracing, I can expect the market goes down next week, but we will see. Yes, I will cover Nifty 50 later on. I will cover the gold and US oil and then cover indices, including Nifty chart. So please bear with me that. So that is the gold analysis and let's move on to the WTI crude oil. And this is bearish. After you see the trend line breakout and Kijun Sen breakout, the market looks to be heading towards back to the Kumo now. So, um, and also Chikou Span is about to touch, is touching actually the candles. So yeah, this is bearish. So next week could be also a bearish trend. But we will see that. So let's cover some indices. Let me drink a cup of water. Just keep, keep myself going. So let's cover the indices now. So I will cover the Nikkei first and then US indices, Dow Jones, NASDAQ and S&P and then Euro stocks, FTSE 100, and CAC France, DAX index, and Nifty, and AU200, and Hansen. I cover all these. So let's start from Nikkei. As a Japanese trader, I have to cover Nikkei. So this is bearish because after this descending P wave, looks like it's broken downwards. And on the weekly chart, the market is into the Kumo now. So the market is into the Kumo, but th since this is the breakout of the descending P wave, it could continuously be bearish. The Kumo is flat, Kijun Sen is pointing down, Chikou Span is pointing down also. 
So next week could be bearish is my view. But uh, if it might, it might test this uh, descending uh, trend line again. So it might go up. Oops, I, sorry, I deleted this uh, descending line. Hold on. So um, yeah, so next week we might see a bullish trend. It might test that level and be bearish afterwards. It is possible. So we will see if it happens or not. But that's Nikkei. And let's cover the Dow Jones. So Dow Jones has been also bullish, but uh, it's a bit weak, weak bullish mode now. Uh, the Kumo's flat, Kumo Senko Span B flat, Senko Span A is also flat, and Kijun Sen is flat, Tenkan Sen is flat. And Chikou Span technically above the candles, so this is bullish, but we have to wait until the market breaks the previous resistance level. Because until it happens, the market still might be in the range. So let's just wait until the market breaks the level of 38, 600 or 7 and then buy, uh, look for buy chance afterwards. Otherwise, it might retrace back down to the Tenkan Sen again. So I will just cancel this uh, tag here. And the next one is Nasdaq. Nasdaq is potential bullish, but here, once again, this is also a bit resisted at the previous high. Uh, on this uh, 1500, sorry, 15,189, the market has been resisted here. But technically, the price itself is above Tenkan Sen and Chikou Span above the candles, so we might see a breakout. But after we see breakout, we can buy. Otherwise, it might retrace backwards to the Tenkan Sen or all the way down to Kijun Sen. So, this is where you have to be patient. To look for any opportunities in the market. And the next one is US 100, 500, S&P 500, and this is bullish. As you can see here in the Kumo here, the single span B is up, single span A is also up, and Kijun Sen, Tenkan Sen both upwards, and Chikou span above the candles. So, looks like the market is continuously bullish above the Tenkan Sen. And since we have these bullish lines on the Ichimoku, next week also could be bullish. So S&P 500 is a good one to look for buy chance in case you're looking for it. So the next one is Euro stocks. Euro stocks are a bit flat ranging. The Kumo flat, Kijun Sen is flat. However, this is also bullish because the price above Tenkan Sen and Chikou Span above the candles. So in this, in this one also, we have to wait until the market breaks the resistance level and expect the market to, re, uh, to reach to the next run number of 4,300. Otherwise, it may retrace back down to the Tenkan Sen, and if it breaks, it may down all the way back to the Kijun Sen. So, that is the euro stocks here. So I will just delete this uh, tag here also. And the FTSE 100, this is also ranging, similar to euro stocks, Kumo flat, Kijun Sen flat. And this is technically bullish, but until we see the breakout of the previous high at 72, 13.29 level, uh, we might see bearish. We might, we might see market retraces back to the Kijun Sen. And CAC France is also um, retracing. It last week was bearish, so this is in the range mode now. The market might retrace all the way back to Kijun Sen if it breaks the Tenkan Sen. So be careful next week. And the next one is DAX index. So DAX index is a similar case. This is also flat Kumo flat Kijun Sen. So we have to wait for the breakout of the, of the resistance. But uh, we can still see the potential breakout next week because the price is above the Tenkan Sen and Chikou Span above the candles. But if you see the market breaks the Tenkan Sen next week, then we have to expect a retracement all the way 
back to Kijun Sen. So I will take this one away also and moving on to Nifty chart. So Nifty chart, Nifty 50, this is bullish simply because a single span B's up and A's up and Kijun Sen, Tenkan Sen both moving upwards and the Chikou span above the candle. So next week we might see bullishness. So this Ichimoku analysis should be very simple. If you simply follow these Ichimoku lines direction, then it should be good. Okay, so the next one is the Australia 200. This one is flat now, flat Kumo, flat Kijun Sen, but Chikou span above the candles and the price above the Tenkan Sen, so we might see the bullishness. Uh, the market might be bouncing by the Tenkan Sen and it may go up next week. But if we see the breakout of the Tenkan Sen, then it may retrace all the way back to the Kijun Sen. So we'll see on that. I will take that away. And lastly, this is Hansen Index. Hansen Index has been dropping down so heavily uh, since March. It's been bearish, especially since June. This is bearish. So, and it's about to break the support level. So, this is bearish. But in terms of the Ichimoku analysis here, this is still range. This is retracing. But overall, market is a bit range because the Kumo flat. So until we see Kumo twist, it might be bouncing and it may retrace backwards to the previous high or single span B level. So we'll see if it happens. Okay, so that covers the whole analysis on this indices. So let me cover the news for next week let me place the news website here now hold on oh, oh, oh hold on let me see i guess today i will i will use a different website because I don't think I can launch on the uh, US website because of this uh, VPN setting for today. So I will pick up some news website, uh, other news website to review for next week. So we can choose any website, maybe daily effects would be good. Um, let's see, market news, market overview. Let's see if they have calendars. Okay, their calendar, economic calendar I have. So let's see. So next seven days. Okay, so here is the website calendar. And so next, next seven days. Um, so next week, starting from the August 23rd, so this is towards the end of August already, time flies. So next Monday, 23rd, uh, we have uh, not, not a big news. Uh, the only one we have is this uh, market manufacturing PMI. So this can be affected on the USD. But otherwise, I think these are, this is the only news we have. And moving on to the next day, 24th and Tuesday, let's see what kind of news we have. We have a GDP report in Germany, so Euro could be affected by that on Tuesday. And that's it. Moving on to Wednesday, 25th, we have an uh, IFO, business climate, on Germany, so Euro could be affected by this. And I don't really look at Mexico um, and uh, US, United States, there will be a durable goods orders. So USD could be affected by this. And that's it. And the 26th, next week, we have another Germany. Uh, consumer confidence. So Euro could be affected by this. 
and I think that's it. Oh, sorry, Euro, we have a policy meeting and a, a ECB, so Euro itself could be affected by this, and also GDP report. So I think Thursday could be a busy day. And next Friday, we have uh, news in the US, price index, and also Michigan sentiment report will be there in the US. So, and that's it. So next week, just watch out on Thursday on the monetary, sorry, ECB uh, policy meeting, monetary policy meeting, and also GDP report in the US on Friday. We have to watch out on the USD pairs also due to this uh, price index and also Michigan sentiment report. So that's the news we have for next week. So I don't trade by news, basically, but I watch news every weekend and every Monday or before I take trades, I make sure that there is no big news because if there's big news, you know, even if you spend time to see charts and, you know, capture trends by Ichimoku, this news can wipe out all these, all these, um, you know, technical analysis. So that's why we have to make sure that there is no big news before you take a position. Otherwise, stay away and come back after the news. After like one hour would be enough to come back after the news. And if you see a new trends or new, new um, opportunities, then simply take them. Otherwise, stay away is my advice. Because when there's a big news, you know, when there's a big news happening in real time, the volatility increases and also the spread also gets very high. So even if you have positions, you might be stopped out due to this high volume on the market and high spread in the market. So I don't recommend anyone to, to keep the position with a stop loss before or before the big news happens. You want to close the position before the news and come back to chart afterwards. Okay, so yeah, but that's the all analysis for me. So that's all for me today. So let's cover some comments here. Let's come back to some comments now. So once again, thank you for joining everyone. Great to see you as always. I hope you're having a great weekend today and Sunday. Here in Dubai, in Sunday is a business hour, but uh, markets are closed, so it's it's typically uh, it's typically a the uh, weekend as a trader. Okay, so Kale says I love the non-losing version, non-losing vision. Sure, sure. So I say non-losing because. This was my first goal. Before, when I was losing, I was trying to become a profitable trader, but uh, I switched my mindset from becoming a profitable trader to becoming a non-losing trader. And that help, helped me a lot in terms of improving risk management and lot sizing, stop loss, and break even timings um, and Afterwards, I became profitable. So that's why I say help you become a non-losing trader in this public live stream community and also Ichimoku community and also GTS community as well because this is my philosophy. Okay, thank you for joining everyone. Great to see you here. Rakbar says, um, oh, so yeah, I got the reasons to move to Dubai. So let's see. So you can find my reasons to move to Dubai in my second channel. You can find the link on the below description. Recently, I got the driving license in Dubai. So I have posted a small video about that journey. All right, thank you for joining. Great to see you here. Um, I have technically Facebook, but Facebook is not really active. So you can simply come to my, come to my website 
and see my profile. Or you can find the link on below the description for my profile page. All right, thank you for joining everyone. Great to see you. So this is a bit of a relaxing chat mode until I end the live session in about 10 minutes. Um, MZ, I don't trade cryptos. I don't trade cryptos. Yeah, I don't have experience in trading cryptos and that's why I don't really mention about that. Yeah, I am a tra Forex trader. I only deal with Forex and also gold, but uh, I don't trade cryptos. Kale says, if the candles is in an uptrend or downtrend and it has crossed the Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen, is it a short opportunity or buy or sell? Because it will continue to uh, advance to Kumo. Um, it, no, it doesn't mean like that always. Um, the market might retrace back to Kumo, but um, it might not be the case. After we see this uh, Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen dead cross, in this example, a Nikkei, the market went all the way back to Kumo. But like I mentioned before, Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen, Death Cross simply means that this is the end of the uptrend. But it doesn't mean that the market keeps going downwards afterwards. It might become range, it might become bullish again, or it might become bearish. So simply, when you see Death Cross, Tenkan Sen, Kijun Sen on this time frame, that's when you stop trading, is my advice. So this Death Cross is different from the dead cross in moving average. Ichimoku dead cross, gold cross has its meanings, and if you don't understand correctly, then you might lose some profits. You know. Does BNF use Ichimoku? I don't think so. I don't think Ichimoku, uh, you, BNF uses Ichimoku. I never read his or article where he says, where he talks about Ichimoku. But I don't think he, uh, he does. He mainly uses these basic indicators like moving average. Or he, he, he more of looking at the market orders on stock markets. Yes, I have covered gold, so I hope you catch that. So gold is ranging, but on the weekly chart, it's a bit bearish. So let's just wait for the doji breakout on the weekly chart and gold and expect the market to retrace all the way back to daily Kijun Sen. Modesty says, uh, hello Kay, which time frame do you use to enter the market? I use five or 15 minute time frames to enter the market. So I look for what I call trading edge on these lower time frames. All right, let's see. So I have covered Nifty and Dow Jones. This is TradingView. I am using TradingView platform right now. TradingView is good because it's it's uh, it looks nice and uh, it uh, connects with the other devices like uh, tablet or uh, mobile. It saves all the lines, all, the, all these watch lists, all these you know, color settings and everything, and um, it can be you know, used on the other devices. So this is something that I like about TradingView. And also, most importantly, the Kumo is correct. Kumo displacement and um, calculations are all correct. Footnote says, you need a VPN in Dubai to access market news. Uh, I don't have to, I don't have to use VPN, but just in case I do. Even when I was in Japan, I used VPN because I want to 
Be secure on everything. Let's see. So simply you can just, uh, you know, uh, type one thing, one time, one message, one time, and that, that, that's good. Okay, so let's see what else we have here. Can you run a top-down analysis on one of the pairs you highlighted? So I will do the top-down analysis uh, during the week. So next week, if, if we see a nice trending market, I will do that. The markets are closed anyways right now. It's kind of stopped and there's no trends in the lower time frames. So it's better to do it when the market's already active next week. Yeah, let's see. It's CFD. I use the CFD broker, yes. Let's see. Antisys says, uh, do you trade full-time and how much money do, would I need to go full-time? Um, yes, I'm full-time and I claim myself as full-time because this is my main source of income, so it's full-time. But it doesn't mean that I keep watching the chart all day long. It's impossible. So I only screen chart three times to five times per day. And if I don't see any edges on these timings on the day, then simply I don't trade. I don't trade on that day. And how much you need depends on your performance, depends on your performance in terms of how much return you can make. So before talking about it, you have to backtest and get the stats. If your return is 10% per monthly basis, then you can calculate backwards and you can come up with the number, how much you need for, for yourself to, to live with that return 10%. It also depends on the, how much you spend per monthly basis also, or yearly basis. Okay, so please don't repeat. You can just type one, thing, one time, otherwise I have to ban due to this uh, rules and the, uh, the guidelines, please read. Roger says, do you have some hint on making a trading bot that is based on Ichimoku? Um, unfortunately, no, because I don't use bot. I never use EAs or robots or signals. I always see charts and take trades manually. So I have no knowledge and experience towards these areas. Yeah, for myself, I like to trade manually. I set the alerts. I do the alerts, but uh, when it comes to taking trades and exits, I do it manually. So I am a manual trader. Wonder says, uh, I know you probably don't look at Bitcoin usually, but would be love to your TA it this one time. Much love is not fine. Uh, yeah, Bitcoin, we can watch quickly. So here is the weekly Bitcoin. And this is, okay, so the market broke the Kijun Sen upwards now on the Bitcoin. And however, overall weekly chart is flat now, flat Kumo, flat Kijun Sen. So in my turn, bearish anytime soon on this weekly chart. But let's look at the daily chart. Okay, daily chart looks to be bullish. So we can follow the daily uptrend. Looks like this uh, Kumo's up, Kijun Sen is upwards now, and a Chikou span above the candles. So this may be consecutive bullish trend. The market may retrace backwards to the Tenkan Sen, but as long as the market is above the Tenkan Sen on the daily chart, it should be bullish. Is my is my uh, analysis. So, yeah, so that's... 
But yeah, once again, I don't, I don't trade bitcoins or any cryptos, so this is just for information. Yeah, Nami, you're welcome. And uh, let's see. Anne says, uh, if you trade on the 5 15 minute time frame, there is no need to analyze multiple time frames, right? Uh, you have to. You have to analyze in from higher time frames. You have to always do top down analysis because if you only focus on these lower time frames, um, you never know which way the market is trying to go in the bigger picture. So, you might be going against the major direction in 515 and you might be stopped out in that trade. So always have to follow the major direction is, is my rule. Zenon says, did you ever trade stocks or options and how does it compare to Forex? I don't, I never trade Forex, I never trade stocks or options. Yeah, I never trade indices either. But from this October or November, I will start to trade. But for now, I only focus on Forex. And the pros about the Forex is that they move up and down every day or every week. Uh, whereas these uh, stock markets or indices, they don't really move so much, but they go towards one direction. But Forex, it goes up and down every day, every week. So in Forex, we have opportunities for buy and sells every week. And I think that's a, that's a pros about the Forex. Okay, so yeah, that's it for today's analysis. I use a broker called XM Trading. I have been using it for five years and it's been working so great. So XM Trading is my broker. Okay, Dijamel says, can you please do some analysis about cryptos from time to time? Sure, uh, as per request, I can do that. Uh, and, but in terms of cryptos, because I don't trade, um, I don't feel positive to talk about it because I wanna talk about the only things that I do or I have done. So the things I never do, I prefer to do it as per request. So for example, I don't really talk about these other indicators. I only talk about the Ichimoku because I only use Ichimoku for now. And I used to use uh, moving average. So I have experience knowledge of moving average so I can talk about it. But uh, in terms of the cryptocurrencies, I don't feel like talking about it actively. So you can remind me, you can just rem rem remind me like, you know, say, like, okay, please watch Bitcoin, please watch Ethereum, then I'm happy to watch. I'm happy to share my analysis. But my main area is Forex, and that's why I talk about Forex, and because I feel confident on these Forex pairs. But basically what I talk about is universal. So technically, you can apply on any markets. Okay, so that's the analysis for today. Thank you for watching until the end. So uh, yeah, so this is Friday. After this, I will probably go out for dinner or I probably I will just eat a dinner tonight at home and uh, probably just take a walk around because at night time, Dubai time, it's still good. It's okay. It's not too hot. It's about like 31, 32 degrees in Celsius. It's not really too cold, but it's okay hot. So um, probably I will take a walk and relax on this Sunday night and get ready to take trades from, tom from tomorrow. All right, so once again, thank you for joining and I hope you have a great weekend, great Sunday. Looks like COVID cases increasing worldwide, including Japan, it's still under a state of emergency and I think New Zealand and Canada is also spreading uh, very much. New Zealand is under lockdown. So yeah, wherever you are, uh, please be safe and please stay healthy and stay gold, all right? Bye for now. Matane. See you soon.